Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Showcase on Warframe. Today's topic, Valkyar. I believe that's how it's properly pronounced. Anyway, with the omission of Valkyrie letters, we have the Valkar. Now, Valkar is a bit of a strange Warframe, although she's a bit of on the older side now, but she kind of appeals to someone who wants to be a tank, but who doesn't want to be a tank. <laughs> So yeah, a bit of a strange uh, ideology there. We can see that she has the greatest armor along any Warframe by a large margin. But she costs this for almost having no shields. Minimalistic shields. Just shy of Inaros or Nidus for having no shields at all. <laughs> so yes. Now, Valkyrie does appeal to those people who want very fast pace. So tanks usually are slow and clunky. Valkyrie is the opposite. She moves very quickly. She attacks very quickly. Now, where is she best found? Well, you find the plain version from Alad B. Defeating uh, Alad B can yield one of three parts to Valkyrie. That's a normal one anyway. And where you do find him is on Jupiter, on Themiso. Uh, probably mispronounced that, but I don't really particularly care pronouncing these level names. <laughs> so yes, it's on Jupiter on the latter end. So he's not too hard to get to. It's around the, what, third, fourth planet players unlock nowadays? I'm a little hazy on that, but no matter, let's move on. <clears throat> so, going on the Valkyr stats. Well, no surprise that her armor is tremendously high. At 600. You might as well get that out of the way. Lots of armor. Health, though? Average 100. Shields? Very low at 50. Lowest shield count among those who at least have shields. Her energy is at 100, and the sprint speed is 1.1. Alright, now I'll do a step further when fully upgraded. Health is 300 when fully upgraded, shields 150, and power is also 150. So in terms of energy and shields, she's on a very low end. That's the idea, oh, she's not a heavy caster. This is the idea, because you're meant to be going through your opponents quick. So yeah. It, like I said, doesn't cater to all players out there. Not to mention, she's not exactly built for crowd control either. You'll see as we go into the ability portion moving on here. Now, on to these abilities. Her passive is faster recovery from being knocked down, and also she has no hard landings. That's also another passive. They don't list it here, but you'll see when I go into combat, you'll see plenty. So let's start off with a rip line here. Ripline is pretty basic and simple. It can get you around pretty quickly. But it also can be used as an attack. Now, like I said, if you, don't, if you miss an opponent, it just takes you in a meter direction. But if you landed on an opponent, yoink. Yoink. <laughs> so it's a very uh, jaggered pull on your enemies. You can fly them in the whatever direction you're not facing. So yes, it's a good way to get around, though bullet jump makes it almost obsolete. As you see there, no hard landing. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty much all to that move. Now, going on to Warcry. One of the more arguable useful moves. This is a multi-buff move. Increases your armor, increases your well, well, melee weapon speed, and also slows down the enemies. So that's quite a bit there. That's quite a bit to do. So I got the Obex, which are very quick melee weapons. Not particularly strong, but you can see they're very quick. And now, when I activate Warcry, uh, they're incredibly quick now. <laughs> no human can ever move that fast. Not without sending the blood to his legs and probably passing out. <laughs> okay, so we'll test that more later on the actual test. But now onto paralysis, which is kind of like a stun. But however, there's a catch. It uses your shields to produce that stun. So you see here, it can kill enemies, though it's not very particularly strong. So don't expect to kill anything above... I don't know, level 25 with the power paralysis. Unless you put a lot of power strength into your Valkyr. You see there it has a very limited range. But I'm intensely draining my shields now. Also, if you noticed, it doesn't cost very much energy. Very little energy altogether. Alright, with no shields, as you see, it doesn't really kill my opponents anymore. So that's the catch. You must have shields for us to actually harm opponents. But chances are you're just power paralysing them for a finisher. As you see, they'll be open to. <laughs> but yes, you must have shields to produce any damage, but eh, it's kind of the low end of the effect. Now for Hysteria, the one the ability she's known for. Hysteria, well, I'll just show you. 
Well, as you see, I am greatly outnumbered, although I don't feel very threatened thanks to my high armor. <laughs> though at any point, I can activate Hysteria. When activated, it makes me invulnerable. I no longer take any damage. Now, a whole bunch of things are going on. First off, you can only switch to our unique claws, which have their own base damage, around 250 damage. And that's balanced between all three types of types of damage, puncture, impact, slash. Also, as you notice, on having a percentage in the bottom right, this is pretty much the percentage of energy being drained. You see, the higher that number goes, the quicker the drain was. There's a bit more, but I'll talk about it later in the video. There's no doubt some people are waiting for me to get on to the Valkyr Prime. It's no full surprise here that this is in the game. <laughs> Everyone knows of it. Anyway, the Valkyr Prime is a direct upgrade, and you can at least see there are some stats upgrades already, but I'll get into that later. Getting her is not too difficult. Half the parts are pretty easy, and she's still farmable in the game at the making of this video, though that will not be the case for down the line. She'll eventually be vaulted. And she came with the Vanka Prime and the Cernos Prime. Arguably, the Cernos is harder to get than she is. <laughs> Five parts is a bit annoying to grab, well, farm, but whatever. Okay. Now, on to stat differences. Well, her armor is the big stat difference. You got 700 opposed to 600. Health remains the same, though. And so is shield. Power, however, starts at 150. Alright, and the sprint speed is, again, 1.1. I also did forget to mention the polarities on the original Valkyrie, but I'll just edit those in, as you probably saw. And the Valkyrie Prime has an extra matter eye, so yes, there's three matter eyes built into her table. This could be a, both a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you build your Valkyrie. For me, I find it very annoying. And the aura polarity is still matter eye. Alright. So when fully upgraded, the health is uh, 300 like before, shields 150, and energy is 225 when fully upgraded. So there's a significant difference there. She has a lot more energy to use, now Hysteria is a lot more sustainable. Because, you know, when you use it too long, it drains very quickly. <laughs> Here it is, the ultimate build. My ultimate build. And now, I'm not a huge Valkyr player, but nonetheless, I built one that can survive most combat. Okay, as you see, I did not bother with redirection at all, but I do have a Primed Vigor. Uh, I'm aware that a lot of my players who watch this video will not have a Primed Vigor. If that is the case, then you can use a regular Vigor or put on more duration, is what I would recommend. Anyway, Rejuvenation is simply my choice of, you know, aura, mod aura mods at all times. <laughs> and, no, it's not really needed on the Valkyrie, but it's still there. Anyway, I got Power Drift and the e Bolt. The extra slot, the additional slot for more power strength. Transit Fortitude for more strength, but reduces durability or duration. But I've offsetted that with Prime Continuity. Now, I also have Steel Ball Fiber for more armor. It's obvious it should go on here. As well as Armored Agility. It doesn't add a huge amount, but still I argue that it's still good. Also, I've put on Streamline. Although this could be many other mods, I put Streamlines that can activate my Hysteria for longer and my other abilities. Now for the extra matter eye slot, I decided to put on Rage. I didn't remove it, so I figured put on Rage, because you don't have a lot of shields, so the enemies will cut through your shields and get to your health, but you get energy back. So this is one of the good Warframes to have Rage on, because you always need energy to activate your Hysteria. Because without it, you won't last much longer than the other Warframes in battle. Okay, now for a test. Now, I'm not going to do a testy huge amount, but I'll at least show what what I could do with all my abilities. So we'll just grab a bunch of butchers. Cause why? Because they don't fire back, so they're pretty easy to deal with. Okay, we'll jack them up to the max level. 145. Alright. Now, if this was my Equinox, I'd probably die in one slice, one to two slices from these guys, but my Valkyrie could actually, you know, survive. So Ripline, as you see, eh, it's good for knocking enemies off the zone of playing here. Because I respawn, they don't. Alright, so now I've got myself pretty hurt. Let's activate Hysteria. Okay, so you can see I can cut through them pretty easily. Now, another thing about Hysteria, you notice that I do take damage right beside my health, there's a number there. When I do release that number, it transfers out as, as damage overall. Now, that could be decent, but I don't find that feature about Hysteria very effective. 
Now you see my war cry here. It's dramatically slowed them down. They can barely hit me. I could pummel out the Obex, but the Obex doesn't do a whole lot of damage. That's fine. That's intentional for now. And Paralysis? Well, I don't find Paralysis a very good ability. You can use it when in tandem with your Hysteria, but it does drain more energy. So that's all up to you. Now I want to test the damage of what I can this enemy does to me. So that's right there, that's... Okay, it says 140 around it. Yep, 140 damage. I'll activate Warcry, which increases my armor. Let's see now. Hit me. That's 100. 100. Yep, so there you go. Went from 140 damage to 100 damage. So a significant difference there. Now I will go over a couple of the Augments. I don't, I mean, I'm missing one because I couldn't get my hands on it in time, but no matter. For now we got well, Swing Line, which I find entirely useless. Just makes your ability cheaper as every time you swing onto a wall. whoop de do. Long Paralysis, which is a paralysis that makes enemies stunned longer. whoop de do. You don't. No one uses a Valkyrie for any of these abilities. Eternal War is where it's at. Eternal War, however, will increase the duration of tur well, Eternal War by two seconds for every person you kill. Now there's another one, though its name escapes me. I'll put it somewhere here. And it's for the Hysteria and allows you to leap jump over to an enemy using a secondary fire, which I find arguably useless. Because you can get around pretty easily regard without it. <laughs> now, I'll activate my Vault Warcry in a second. Just want to gather up my, my opponents. I made him intentionally weak. Now watch my counter. So you see there? Boom. Goes up very quickly. So, it's kind of all caters to people who like melee weapons. And arguably, that's what Valkyrie is mainly used for, is people who love melee weapons, though all the people who don't care for melee weapons use her as well. Though, in terms of usability, I think she's pretty good. But, uh, yeah, you can see the augment's pretty good. So it's up to your choice if you wish to use that. But wait, did you know her final ability, Hysteria's Abalt, is changed by various other melee mods you have equipped? So where I got my Fragar Prime, you'll see in a second. Alright, now I'll grab some uh, Corrupted Lancers, level 100. They're pretty good for this. Now, I'm going to get hurt a little bit so I can get some energy. You see there? I can be Hysteria. And what's this? Berserker? That's right. For the critical chance to fragger at 50%, and I have a Berserker mod on that sucker. If you probably remember the review from that. So yes, that's without war, that's without the war cry right there. So we'll activate war cry. How fast do you think I'm going to go now? <laughs> well, there's a cap on the speed. Yeah. Go nuts. <laughs> so based on your melee weapon, you're... Warcry can get, or your Hysteria can get stronger. Though there is a certain limit how much your Warcry can do damage-wise, you can certainly put on mods like this. Although not every mod works. There are a list of ones that don't work. Okay, going on to the pros and cons of the Valkyr. All of the, I show Valkyr Prime, but all the pros and cons translate between the two. Okay, on the pros, well, she has her Hysteria makes her immortal when she's well, in that state. You can easily revive people, you know, she gets her health back. It's all pretty easy and good. Also, she has a very, very high amount of armor, the highest in the game. <laughs> okay. Those are the two major pros here. Going on to cons, she has pretty much very poor crowd control. And her offensive abilities are limited but because of such. She's mainly for survivability. And that's obvious as you watch this video up to this point, if you watch the whole thing. Going on to the score, now, I do have to change the score for Warframes. Stats, well, I'm going to give stats in total 8 out of 10. She has very good stats, that's, that's for sure. You can definitely easily survive, even without using her abilities. Design, in terms of how she's built, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Without any crowd control, it's whenever a War Valkyrie player shows up to a battle where you're facing level 80s, level 100s, you can assume they're not doing much ability-wise other than saving you if you need it. Chances are they won't need to be saved. Cons up though, I'm going to give a 7 out of 10. Even though she fits to a weird demographic, I can see why she's made. She's made for people who want to well, play the game quickly. You want to get through and charge without worrying about dying immediately. Endgame though, 10 out of 10. <laughs> when you have a Valkyrie player and you're fighting level 100 and level 140, chances are if that player knows how to use a Valkyrie, they will not be dropping in the fight. The other one saving everyone else. <laughs> Not really doing all the damage, but you get the idea. 
Miscellaneous, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's definitely a good Warframe. But is it the best fit for every battle? No. Sometimes you need to bring the damage and sacrifice yourself in doing so sometimes. <laughs> but in total, I give Valkyr 38 out of 50. She's an excellent Warframe. Despite all of her limits, she still has the greatest type of survivability among every Warframe in the game, by a large margin. Okay, I don't really see any other ways to build it other than the way I pointed out earlier of adding more duration. Now, in terms of judgment, well, it's a solid yes. There's few Warframes better than for Endgame than Valkyr. Even though well, she's mainly for the people who don't use abilities, she's still for people who even use abilities and want to, because she survives so damn well. But no matter, that's my opinion. And that's been Showcase for Taylor. Thank you all for watching, and hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.